watched. Brilliant. Okay, so yeah, um, the, the one in the middle there they introduced. That's the one. Brilliant. So um, yeah, um, thank you all for for coming today. Um, those of you that are here live, it's great to. Well, we can't see you, but it's great to have you um, here listening to us. And as I say, this will be recorded, and we can um, share this with your peers. Um, so thank you for your time today. And what we wanted to talk to you about um, is probably won't take more than an hour or so, just to talk to you about uh, what geography means to us uh, and who are we. What, why are we telling you what geography um, means to us? Well, uh, we are people from the the geography kind of course offering at uh, Coventry University. So I'm um, at the top of that list there. My name is Matthew Blackett uh, and I run the uh, the curriculums, so the various courses that come under the energy and environment umbrella. And obviously that includes geography. Geography to me is central to all of that. And then we've also got um, three course directors here for the three different geography courses that we offer. We have Jade. Jade, I don't know if you're no, Probably can't see, yeah, Jay's there. You probably can't see these people, but you will see them shortly. And we've got Craig on the line, and we've also got um, Charlie on the line. Most importantly, however, we also have a few of our students on the line too. Um, so they are going to be uh, key today, um, helping us out. They, they always help us out, um, and also hopefully helping you out. So if you've got any questions or queries about the course, um, they are the real experts on it. We think we're giving a good course. They can actually confirm whether that is the case or not, and hopefully they will be. Um, on our side there offering um, some some thoughts as to our geography offering. Next slide please. So some of you may think of geography in these terms, okay? Um, you may think of rivers, you may think of environmental stuff, mountains, volcanoes, the sort of stuff I like. You may be thinking more ecologically, conservation, you may be thinking the atmosphere, you may be thinking under the ground, thinking of the geology um, or the soil there. There may also be others of you that literally switched off the second I mentioned those words. And perhaps this next image, Charlie, is um, more what you think about as geography being. Um, geography being um, for people, where people live, what, what people do on the planet, where they inhabit, why they inhabit those areas and how they do so. Whether they live in a city and in an urban environment or whether they live in rural uh, environments or whether they kind of spend their time uh, between those two environments. And geography is obviously uh, the, the key thing that that summarizes both of these two areas. It's basically where humans live um, and and how humans interact with that environment. Charlie. So to me, these two icons summarise uh, what geography is. OK, geography is the study of space and how space changes through time. So space, as we consider it, is the space, the planet, the Earth's surface and kind of a little bit below it and a little bit above it. OK, that is the, the geosphere and everything that happens within that geosphere is what we would study um, with regard to geography. And therefore, you could argue that geography is everything. And then geography also incorporates, um, in addition to the spatial scale, it incorporates a temporal scale. So how these things change uh, through time. And we're pretty lucky at Coventry because we have um, almost like a laboratory or out the university sits within a laboratory of changing space uh, through time. And I thought I'd just spend a minute or two just talking you through the geography of, of Coventry um, and how that relates to some of the stuff that you uh, might study when you as and when you're studying geography. So, Charlie. So um, this is the um, the. I guess the coat of arms of Coventry and you can see that there are two birds there one on the left one on the right the one on the right is Coventry uh, the phoenix bird rising from the ashes rising from the flames and there are um, stories of Coventry continuously reinventing itself whether through necessity um, or um, as what's happening at the moment through opportunity. So Charlie, if you can chuck up the first picture please. This is how Coventry appeared around the turn of the um, 19th century, uh, sorry, 20th century. So um, before the First World War, this image was taken. And by all accounts, Coventry was a beautiful city. It would uh, match Stratford upon Avon for being beautiful and Tudor and having lots of cobbled, narrow streets. A really nice, pleasant place to uh, to spend your time. Something then happened, Charlie. Um, in 1940, Coventry was pretty much flattened um, in an air raid. And I'm sure that some of you have studied this perhaps in, in history that you've uh, looked at. Uh, Coventry was completely flattened and by necessity, there wasn't um, 
it, this wasn't because they wanted to make a new city by necessity the town had to be rebuilt and rebuilt from these flames hence that um rising phoenix bird from from the ashes so coventry looked like this and then it wasn't long charlie please um before the town planners came along and they created the the city of the future okay this is how coventry looked the day that the the precinct opened i'm uh, talking 19 i forget the exact year, the 1960s anyway here um and this was cutting edge and um, this was the most modern city center in the world and town planners had been given free reign to try all of these new and innovative things out so we're starting to see how this space of Coventry is changing through time but that didn't really stand the test of time so Charlie if you can put the, the second last image up here um Coventry started to get quite I don't know how to describe it used quite grey quite lived in um and this architectural um innovation didn't really stand the test of time um, and then a few years back, the opportunity came for Coventry to apply to be the UK's um, city of culture. And as a result of that, um, a load of funding has been pumped into the city now. Um, and this isn't really out of necessity. The city functioned as it was. This is out of requirement for, for change. OK, and Charlie, if you can put that last slide up. Um, this was uh, an image I took of Coventry a few weeks ago as I walked through that same precinct that you've just seen pictures of now. Unrecognisable from a year ago, unrecognisable from 40 years ago, unrecognisable from 100 years ago. Um, the city is constantly reinventing itself, as I say, whether through necessity or um, just um, through through this opportunity here. And that's where we are now. Our university sits in the middle of Coventry, which is currently undergoing a city of culture renewal. Uh, and I think that Coventry um, is a nice example. It's a nice place to um, think of geography with regard to changing space um, and how that space changes over time. So that's the, the boring stuff. I'm now going to hand over to the course directors who can tell you more about um, their courses, uh, but all, more specifically about the stuff that is central to their courses, some of the um, theories, some of the, the background and some of the, the information that they feel passionate about in their, their personal study of geography. Perfect. Cheers, Matt. Um, so I was gonna, I'm going to start with um, taking from a physical geography standpoint. And then um, we're going to start to look at the other, the other two degrees as well. Um, but I think for those of you that have kind of have, have seen and watched a lot of our webinars, you'll notice that particularly with the four of us that are here that have done them, uh, myself, Charlie, Jade and Matt, all of them have a huge underpinning in climate change because we you know, really quite strongly feel that it is the most important element of, a, of the medium to long term. We know that coronavirus is going to have its implications, particularly in the short term um, on, e on economy and the environment. But in the medium term and the longer term, we know that climate change is so intrinsic to how the environment and how, how everything that Matt just talks about, the world that we live in, is going to look in the future. And geographers are absolutely critical to that because what we study is that understanding of process. We know how and why climate change happens. We know the intricacies behind it and we can articulate that really well. That's our job as geographers. We're able to understand the science, but also the impacts. But also we can make we can we can move that argument on further by understanding some of the historic change as well. And at Coventry, we look at some of those um, what we would term climate change in the quaternary period, the last 2.6 million years, I think it is. Um, where we've had, you know, our colleagues Adrian Wood, Jason Jordan, and Michelle Farrell all doing webinars on something along those lines. And it's why I believe that not just what we teach at Coventry, but geography in general is such an important degree because, you know, it's not just the, the kind of the younger people, you know, driven by the movement from Greta Thunberg over the last few years that has allowed us to understand the importance of climate change. I think it's fair to say now that there is, aside from Donald Trump, we're not going to discuss that. Um, there is a much more realisation of maybe people are still sceptical about exactly the nature and the scale of climate change, but at least an acceptance of. And it's why geographers are so important in a, in a changing world. We've got the COP talks coming up. They happen every year, or give or take every year, didn't quite last year. Um, the Conference of Parties happening in Glasgow later on this year, which is run in conjunction with the UK government, with the Met Office, to try to understand exactly how we can change things. And geographers are absolutely crucial to that and will play that key part. 
Because as I say, we understand the science behind it. We understand the impacts and the process. And if we start to consider this is so I wanted to think about something that's happening at the moment. And we I wanted to quickly look at the the, the change in or the increasing the increasing movement of, into drought conditions that we're seeing on the west coast of the US. So that's just a this is just a map taken from uh, the back end of last week of looking at the west coast and how it's moving into those drought conditions. But the impact that that has, whether that be on people in these spaces and how this is going to impact um, people going forward. But also the ecology, the conservation and the biodiversity, all of these are critical things that geographers can understand. Or whether it be just the impacts of water scarcity or water excess, things that I look at from a flooding side of things. All of these are key issues that geographers can answer and we help understand that. And then we can start to think about some of the ways that we can mitigate this going forward, whether that be um, sustainability measures, looking at building design. Again, these are these are absolutely crucial questions that we as geographers can really start to answer. And it's why um, we embed that as part of the, the degree across the whole as you know, climate change really is an important intrinsic part. And then taking bits off it, the things like I've just mentioned, the ecology, the rivers, the processes that Matt talks about, the environmental change stuff that we then bring in to, to sit around it. Um, so that's why I, I, I'm quite passionate about the, the importance of us as geographers in the in the world, really. And our, and our space in a changing world. So over, over to you, Charlie. So from a standpoint of uh, physical geography and natural hazards, or geography and natural hazards rather than physical geography, um, obviously hazards um, in themselves are, are quite a topical um, area of geography and uh, an area that perhaps um, reaches the news a little bit more often. Um, when we think of a hazard, we think of something like a, a volcanic eruption like we've got here, uh, a hurricane, wildfires like in Australia um, last year. But if we come fairly recently to um, the last month or so, obviously we had um, the Lesser Sophia eruption in um, St Vincent and the Grenadines. Um, and this is perhaps the first Time we've had an event, a, a natural hazard or a, a natural disaster um, during what is a pandemic as well. So actually with what we've got here is quite a complex issue arising. We've had over the course of the last year a pandemic and obviously we we're all aware that this is um, affect our, our daily lives and, and how we lead our daily lives. Um, but the fact that a natural hazard has occurred alongside a, a, an eruption or a volcanic event means that the complexity of the response um, has become a little bit more complex. So what I like to think about in terms of natural hazards is actually it's not the, the physical process um, of the event itself occurring, the, the eruption and why that has occurred, but it's the complexity of everything that surrounds that eruption. Um, so there's a few images here that I've, I've taken that perhaps um, summarise what we can think about in relation to natural hazards. Um, quite nicely. Down in our, our bottom right hand corner, we've got our understanding of the past eruptive activity in um, St Vincent. So we can look back into the past, the tephra and the fallout that has occurred to understand the type of eruptions that have happened previously. And in the context of St Vincent, there was a known issue that an eruption would be likely to happen again in the future. And when that would be happening, um, was the question. But associated with that was also the issues surrounding the evacuation response, helping people and helping the individuals, the residents of um, St Vincent. As this event has obviously occurred on April 8th this year, um, we have seen it reach the news, we've seen it reach global, global media um, through the evacuation efforts that have, have occurred, reports of, of cruise ships coming to, to help to to evacuate people from the island, uh, the need for vaccinations to be able to board a cruise ship to be evacuated from the island. Other issues that are arising are the, the ash fallout, so what we can see from past eruptive activity, the tephra and looking at, at the, the past event is actually happening now. We're having ash fallout uh, across buildings, which could result in things like roof collapse, but also across agricultural areas, which extends the issues right into agricultural productivity, into food, um, and into obviously people's livelihoods. 
And associated with that are the issues of the ash and the, the initial eruptive or explosive eruptive activity that occurred um, and how people um, could stay safe from those events, how they could stay, stay safe indoors and outdoors, but also ensuring that in the grand scheme of a, a world pandemic that we provided the aid that was necessary um, for vulnerable individuals, um, for uh, ensuring that obviously there is a post disaster recovery um, and ensuring that the residents of um, St Vincent in themselves are, are able to cope with this event um, in, in the scheme of a world pandemic at the same time. So when we bring all of this together to think about the, the study of natural hazards, something that is particularly important for me is, yes, there are the processes. Yes, we can use satellite imagery and remote sensing to, to understand the event, the heat and the, the gas that's given off by the volcanic eruption. But that comes back down to how that affects the individuals, the residents of the local area, how it affects them immediately, but also in the long term, affecting things like agricultural production. Ash is known to bring more fertile soils, but if you've got ash fall on current crops, you're losing current crop um, as well. So with that, that then leads into the impact on the residents and how they will begin to cope, how they can respond, whether they need international aid and support whether they need to be evacuated, whether they need temporary accommodation. So the study of natural hazards in very much the same way as what Craig has described in relation to, to climate change is, is quite all encompassing. It relates to our processes that are happening in our, on our Earth's surface, but also the residents within them. And that spatial and the temporal aspects of the hazard itself, the eruption in this case, we've been able to learn from the past in terms of past eruptive activity to actually plan for the future um, and plan for the, the evacuation efforts and the response that occurred uh, in relation to this eruption on, in, during April this year. Great, thanks Charlie. So as human geographers, we're very much interested in people and places. It comes at the core of everything that we look at within um, human geography. Um, so not only just in our course here at Coventry, but also in the modules that branch out from that. And I'm sure this is something that you're covering within your own course. Um, so power inequality, social justice, culture, conflict, even the environment, all really important in how we um, understand places, how people live in those places, but also how they might alter those places or create some sort of um, a structure in that place where they're imagined or an actual structure which includes or excludes certain groups. Beth, you um, pop up some of the images, Charlie. Great, thank you. So this first image um, is from a place called Diary London Diary. This is actually where I um, was born and brought up. And this is quite an interesting um, example really of, of what's happening in regards to how spaces have been um, tailored or altered to represent a certain ideology or, or um, nationality in, in particular cases. Um, and so in this case, you'll see the mural there in the in the background. And murals are a big part, particularly within um, Northern Ireland, but you will see it in other parts of um, the UK and Europe to represent um, people's identity in the, in the built environment. Um, so you might get flags, you might get something like the Union Jack or a tricolour for the Republic of Ireland flag. In this case, you might even get some sort of darker historical murals here. This one depicts um, Bloody Sunday, which, which happened in the city in the 1970s. And these are spaces that people occupy on a daily basis. They will, you know, um, pass these on their daily commute. So it reinforces many of um, many aspects of this sort of shared culture um, and shared identity, but also can be quite divisive as well for moving forward. Um, the, the wall here in itself has also been quite interesting because it's been altered on a number of occasions by different groups, um, not just um, the Unionist and Republican um, groups um, who have poor relations, but actually um, the LGBTQ plus community have painted it pink at one point to fight um, for, for rights for um, and transgender people living in the city. 
um, particularly around um, gay marriage. It's also been painted with the Catalonian flag and the Palestinian flag as well at different points to share connections with, with these spaces across the world that they feel that they have, have these relations with as well. Um, if I move on to the next image, What's quite interesting then about how people interact in these spaces is how they might protest or how they might um, in some way try to fight for, for, for different rights. Um, and you'll have seen recently here um, in the UK um, issues um, around, well, we've obviously got the Black Lives Matter movement, which, which has been huge and something that um, I'm sure that you've come across. Um, it's something that's been there for a while, but it's um, re-emerged in kind of a, a bigger force um, due to uh, George Floyd's um, death. And protests like this can be really interesting ways and hopefully positive ways in which people can shape the spaces that they live in and fight for more inclusive rights for certain groups. So the Black Lives Matter movement has also had a role in changing the architecture and space in certain cities. If you think about um, some of the statues, for example, in Bristol, Edward Colston's statue being torn down because of what it represented in terms of history and um, slavery. So, again, sometimes history within the architecture of the city can, can also have negative connotations. But protests have also come up with, um, similar to what Craig's been talking about in terms of Extinction Rebellion as well, fighting for climate change. And again, people are arguing now, as we become a more urban society and our places and our cities are changing, how can we in some way um, try to, to work towards a more sustainable and livable city. And then final image here we have of Coventry, um, City of Culture Bid. So Matt's already talked quite a lot about the history of Coventry, which is so interesting. And for you, if you do get a chance to visit or perhaps even come to, to, to study at Coventry University at some point, um, you will see that all of this history has helped to shape the way that Coventry is now. And it's not just about um, the history in terms of, of the war and um, its industry that we have. We know it's quite famous for its um, car manufacturing, but also music, ska music, for example. How has that shaped the city? And how are students now shaping the city and changing it um, for the better? And in some cases as well, thinking about um, the identities of people who live there, it's got really strong Irish history, which I've always been very interested in. One of the highest populations of Irish people um, in the 60s was in Coventry, but also a West Indian population. And what has that done to change um, the culture and the, the identity of the city moving forward? So um, I think for me, cities are just really interesting places. And I think geographers, have got a really key role in helping to understand it but also to to challenge some of the, the ideologies and um in some ways fight for some sort of social um injustices in places um so yeah as a geographer a particularly human geographer i'm very proud to be part of that that's me So with regards to the, so I suppose what we wanted to do with this live is really just to kind of pull it all together and think about really what we're trying to do with um, across all of the three kind of disciplines really in, in, in geography. We, we embed a lot of what we teach with the uh, sustainable development goals. So I'm, I'm hopeful that, well, I think Jade, you touched on quite a bit in your, in your talk, didn't you as well? And I think again, it's something we've kind of come back to. Um, throughout and I just I thought this was quite a nice way of just overviewing some of the key things that we really try and do with the degree at Coventry so giving students some of these key skills to address, uh, to, regret, to address um, all the big challenges globally so um, whether it be kind of food security or, or education uh, on a change that I've already mentioned and could bang on about for quite a long time to be honest um, but also biodiversity displacement and the hazards as well and all of these really are embedded really nicely in the sustainable development goals and throughout our degree at Coventry because they're the they're, they're the skills that and the the I suppose the areas really which geographers will um 
kind of go into as we go forward and, and the, the skills and, and um, roles, I suppose, that, that, that hopefully our students will go into, um, which I think leads us quite nicely on to actually um, letting our students talk for a bit. I think the four of us have, have, have had our say for a little bit. Is that is that all right, Charlie, Jade, Matt? Yeah, I'm seeing, I think that's a good idea. I'm seeing nods. Um, so, no, I'm just going to go to the first person that has put up on mine, if that's okay. And that's Ryan on mine. So, Ryan, I'm going to pass it over to you if you want. So, what we were just going to think of is um, just let the students give you a bit of a flavor, give you guys a bit of a flavor of, kind of who they are and also what they do and tell you a bit about studying, I suppose. But if you've got any questions, please pop them in the chat and we can kind of take them in as well and ask any of the students any of the questions so please feel free to um to pop any questions in so yeah right over to you cool cool so uh hi guys hi to the seven of you my name is ryan and i'm currently second year bsc geography student at coventry um i suppose my focus within geography is has shifted over the past sort of year and a half from a more sort of human perspective to a more physical interest in the subject so my current passion lies within sort of like ecology, looking at different like biogeographies as well as past environmental changes to landscapes. In addition to using sort of GIS software as well, geographical information systems, which can be applied to a whole host of topics across the subject. Um, I suppose my real reason for choosing geography in the first place is because it really helps us to become more critical thinkers as think critically as thinkers. So similar to what Craig mentioned earlier, as well as creating a sort of like an awareness of place and how we really make sense of it all, to be honest, how we link the past to the present and then come up with ways to improve the future. Perfect. I, I, I'm just going to jump, ask a quick question, Ron, if you don't mind. Um, you um, and have you frozen or are you still there? You are no, still there. I'm still yeah. there. I'm still there. Right. <laughs> so I was just, you were very still as well. I was just thinking, oh no. <laughs> you proud for a bit, make it look like I'm not frozen. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Um, in your first year, I am right in thinking that you did human geography. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, I originally enrolled as a BA geographer. So, so yeah. And what I suppose so was it? I, I, I suppose I just wanted to kind of contact, uh, discuss that a little bit. That that flexibility that we offer. So you had the opportunity at the end of your first year didn't you, to move between the two, and because we offer essentially a straight a same degree, don't we? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, this it, all the uh, modules studied in first year is the same for a BA or a BSc geographer, which is really you know it allows you to kind of study the the. the discipline in such a wide kind of like breadth I guess so you you still get to you don't have to choose like oh if I want to do BA or BSc I'm not entirely sure because that is a kind of a big decision to make when you just sort of come into university sort of thing so I think originally my I was sort of more confident with the human side of geography I enjoyed learning about places and like interactions with those places and how they've changed over time whereas now I sort of I like to my shift has kind of changed towards sort of like the more physical side of things and what I look at now is probably quite different to human geography I suppose so um, that flexibility there is really it really has benefited me in a way it's allowed me to kind of progress into the kind of pathway that I'm now really happy in so yeah. And I, I suppose to add to that, it is, you know, you were one of a few students every year that change and we have a couple that, as you say, it's a big decision to choose whether you're you're a physical geographer or you're a human geographer or it has a student. You know, which one do you are you? And every year we will have a couple of students just kind of swap between each of those disciplines. So I, I thought it was just nice to highlight that. But yeah, thank you very much. Anything you missed out there, Ryan, that I, else you wanted to add? Um, no particular I can think of. No, no. no, that sounds good. But well, if anything comes up, I'll probably bring it back to you. I will pass it now over to Jade and Emmy, if that's OK. Yeah, that works for me. Emmy? Just trying to get my camera on. There we go. Is that all right? Everyone see me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can. We can see you. Um, so I'm Emmy and I do BA geography, so I have a focus on human 
um, side of it. And I'm really interested in like, international development. That's kind of my key thing. I'm doing my dissertation on female empowerment in the global south and how that links to development. Um, I'm also the president of the Geography Society here at um, Coventry and then next year I'm going to be the educational rep for my course and faculty which is quite fun. I like to get um, quite involved at Coventry and like, with my course and with the course directors. <laughs> Great, um, would you be able to tell us a little bit more about what JogSoc is um, and the Geography Society as a whole, what, what do they offer? Um, yeah, so the Geography Society um, is basically just a space and a group um, for all the geography students to get together, usually on a bi-weekly, so every other week. Um, we usually go out for a drink and then a night out. Obviously with COVID, everything's been online. So we just do lots of quizzes and just hanging out. It's just a place to make friends. Like most of us in first year, we um, became friends with our course mates going to JogSoc because it's kind of hard to talk and be sociable in lectures because you're trying to focus on the work. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a great way, it sounds, to, to make those important connections and relationships in that first year where you might um, not know anyone if you're if you're moving away from home. So, um, and yeah, as you said, Amy, it's been a quite a difficult year and um, you've actually done a really good job in keeping it all going. So um, that that's definitely one route that the people can go on if they if they do decide to go to university and jobs is one of many many societies that, that are available. Um, in terms of international development, I didn't really cover any of that in my talk today, but that's, again, that's something I'm particularly interested in. And isn't it Zimbabwe that you're interested in looking at some research in? Um, uh, yeah, Zimbabwe is my um, place of research. And then with international development at Coventry, um, this semester in particular, we focus a lot on the SDGs and then barriers to development, which is where my idea of empowerment came through. Because we looked at like the gendered and cultural barriers to countries developing, because obviously every country is different. We're not all going to develop at the same rate or in the same way, which really interests me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and fingers crossed we'll get a chance to, to visit the Gambia next semester to be able to hone in on some of those skills further. Um, do you have anything else to add? Or? Uh, um, hmm, I'm not really sure. Um, I think another reason I, I wanted to come to Coventry is the advantage modules. I know we haven't mentioned them. So each year you get to choose um, an additional module that like the whole university wide gets to choose. So with, in my first year I chose, it's called Be the Change, um, where we look at the SDGs and then you get to go on a trip for 50 quid, which I thought was really good. But then because of COVID it got cancelled unfortunately but um, I've heard the trips are really good and also with um, Geography Society I forgot to mention that we do an international trip at the end of the second semester um, and that previous place had been like Barcelona last year was meant to be Dublin but I think it got cancelled like the week before because of COVID but they're all really cheap and discounted rates for students. Yeah, yeah, hopefully um, those will get the chance to go ahead next year and we do have um, a you know, options and opportunities for, for subsidising some of our trips here as well. So, yeah, hopefully um, we'll see see a lot more internationalisation um, after after this year. But thank you for that, Amy. That was great. Um, I'll maybe pass on to Charlie and Cameron. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so Hi. I'm Cameron. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we yeah. can, Cameron. Um, I'm just I'm sending Cameron. you live. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm a, uh, a second year uh, BSc uh, Geography and Natural Hazard student. Um, so we look at a lot. Of, well, I'm speaking on behalf of a lot of people when they say that they enjoy uh, volcanoes and earthquakes and all the hazards, hurricanes that, that, that ha occur on, on our Earth's surface and below. And um, I'm really enjoying the course. I think first year you sort of study a, a broad variety of subjects, um, like what Ryan said about, um, which sort of gets you to choose and your sort of main focus where you want to go. Um, and then for second and third year, you, you depending on which course you take is sort of, it, it then becomes more focused on that specific area. Um, so we've looked at modules 
um, like geology. So we look at all the, the processes and the shaping of the land. And then this year we've looked at all of the different hazards that occur. Um, but it's diff slightly different from A level, whereas sort of A level is more content based and you look at case studies and that you go into more depth um, looking at the past um, and then predicting the future and analysing lots of different data. Um, and then obviously a big module that's really useful to do is uh, GIS, um, which Charlie I think talked about a little in her um, in her little presentation, but it's all about um, designing, uh, like analysing data and mapping like uh, hazards spatially and can be used to pr predict uh, hazards for the future. Um, so yeah, and I think like in general a geography degree, you gain a lot of field work skills. We can go on trips. So we were meant to go to Tenerife this year, but unfortunately it got cancelled. But um, we're supposed to go to Sicily next year, um, which would, fingers crossed, go ahead. <laughs> um, but the course is all about and like analysing all the different processes and data we have and essentially looking forward to the future and trying to reduce the impact that all the hazards have on people and, and not just people but a lot of different sectors. Thank you Cameron. I think what, I, I'm going to agree with you there. I really hope we get to Sicily next year. <laughs> I don't want to miss it for a third time. <laughs> Um, going back on your your um, modules, obviously you mentioned GIS and I mentioned satellite imagery. Um, that, uh, or GIS and remote sensing, it's something that you you take on and it's fairly new at university. Did you did you study it or come across it before you came to university? Um, I've never never heard of it before I come to university, if I'm honest. Um, but it's a very like if if I'd have known about it beforehand, I would have probably looked into it a little more, uh, but it's a very sort of useful thing, a uh, concept to learn um, and it can be used in a variety of different ways from mapping different hazards or analysing impacts, uh, transport, there's so much you can do with it um, and it's one of the, the, the biggest sort of things that's used in geography today. Yeah, so it, it's it's it, that's something that I think obviously is important. Is it, ge um, ge geography? And when you come to university, you think you you've covered most of geography, but this this module and this theme is probably something that is fairly new to everybody. But as you said just then, it's you don't study it as just geography and natural hazards, do you? You study it across all of the degrees. So we have everybody all in the same class together, um, and you've learned a range of things. So you mentioned transport. Anything else that you can think of that perhaps when you think of geography and natural hazards, it's not geography and natural hazards and it's perhaps more human geography or or um, what what types of things have you done in your GIS module? Um, sort of we've mapped, so we start off with the basics of mapping areas within countries and we can display uh, areas of high population density uh, or, or area uh, and then we've looked at um, analysing vegetation and how green vegetation is uh, or how not green it is, uh, which can be used to uh, look at land use change and how development has occurred over so many years. Brilliant. And, and thinking towards next year then, that's you're thinking of using some aspects of this for your, for your dissertation, aren't you? For your, yeah. for your final year project. Yeah, no. Next year, I think the G, like this this sort of this semester has been all about learning sort of the, the main principles of GS and what you can do with it. But the next module is more on the natural hazard side of things, and uh, so looking at um, creating heat maps and, and 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 mapping different hazards and impacts, and so it's sort of which would be useful for my research for my dissertation next year. Um, sort of mapping the hazards that uh, Washington State susceptible to for the future. Brilliant, thank you very much Cameron. I'm going to hand over back to, to uh, physical geography now and Alex and, and Craig. Yeah, over to you Alex. Unmute yourself. 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're the first person. Someone had to do it. <laughs> I'm Alex and I'm a second year BSc physical geography student. And um, I think I chose geography just because I'm interested in a bit of everything. And geography, especially at Coventry, um, with the first year being BA and BSc, it covers so many different things, especially very relevant things um, to current day. And I just think especially Coventry has been great um, with the lecturers being like really helpful and stuff. So I felt really comfortable straight away. And that was at, at the open days and stuff. So that was like probably the main reason I chose geography at Coventry. Um, so my main interest is in biodiversity and ecology. Um, and because of that, I've, I've looked into getting a placement and I've secured one at Middlemarch Environmental um, and I'll be an operations project officer. So that will involve the management and delivery of various mitigation and ecological projects that they um, they cover. Um, obviously, like doing lectures is one way of gaining knowledge, but I think employers are really keen on gaining um, graduates that have a bit of experience. So I think that getting a placement, which is uh, between your second and third year, is a great way of applying the skills that you've learned in a, in a working environment. And obviously it, a placement is basically like a, a, a proper job. So you, you have that experience and confidence when you graduate to, to get a, a, a graduate role or a proper job. So yeah, that was my main reason for getting a, um, a placement and hopefully it will support my dissertation next year, which is covering um it's looking at the environmental change so yeah exercise yes. um, you, you said about your placement yeah tell me so what what do you mean by play because obviously I, I suppose some people might not know i suppose so end of second year you yeah. go away for the year yeah so, so it's between your second and third year it's a year out of study and you're basically um in a in a proper job role I guess um, most of them are paid some of them aren't it kind of depends on um, on what you look at um, but uh, your placement role can cover so many different things so obviously mine is an environmental placement role in an environmental consultancy but I know there have been some um, looking at GIS technologies um, building surveying um, lots to do with water and flood um, flood management um, it's there's a lot of things, so many things I could probably go on for hours. So there's a little bit for everyone. And um, my my role in particular actually um, covers a lot of like um, sort of like the management of a business. And my pre I previously worked at hotel, which is obviously very different to a geography degree. But this role kind of covers um, a, a whole mix of skills I, I learned in my previous job role and combining it with my degree. So I'm basically combining two skill sets in a professional environment to hopefully gain some gain some more skills and um, tailor them further. So yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, we probably get saying, what about forty percent of our students probably go on placement every year. I'd say I don't know. What, I'm looking at Matt J and Chai nodding about that. Some it fluctuates and depends. You know, some some years it more, some years less, depending on things going on externally and whether they can stop people employing. Um, but yeah, I think we, 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 we really do like, I think it's a really important part of our degree that every student is automatically enrolled on a four year plan. That doesn't mean to say it has to take four years. It just means that that, that year after your second year can be taken out as a placement, if, as, exactly as you said, Alex. And if you don't want to do it, that's absolutely fine. You can come back for your third year and it's all cut. The fees are all covered, aren't they, by the university as well? Mm -hmm. So yeah. I know Charlie was going to unmute itself at one point. And um, I was going to, you've got some of the, some other examples, haven't you? Where, where, where did we had Kai, didn't we, last year, where places that we've had some people to? So placements where we've had in the past. Yeah, I just saw you unmute yourself and I thought that might be something you might want to. <laughs> I don't think I did, but I can, <laughs> I can, I'll send myself live. So um, we've had a variety of placements in the past, actually. We've, we've had some... Um, quite localised placements, so things like Alex's Middle March is a, a long term placement that we've had um, for a, about a decade now. Um, and more further afield, we've had students go to places like Mexico, to volcano observatories in Mexico, um, Australia, New Zealand, um, the Caribbean. So we've had uh, three links with uh, Jade, who you met earlier, um, to Jamaica, um, right through to Alaska last year. Obviously, unfortunately, due to the pandemic, we had students going over to the USGS 
United States Geological Survey in um, America. Um, but both within the UK as well, we've had a, a wide variety of field study centres. So um, as part of um, your, your A-levels, you might find that you go to a field study centre once or um, for some work, for some coursework. Um, we, we have placements that go to there, into local councils, uh, environmental consultancies and in, in universities, other universities as well as part of research at other universities. Um, so what I would probably say is it's a, it's a wide area of um, opportunities that you can go out and go um, and explore placement opportunities for. And it's a really good opportunity as well for you to get a feel for, for where you might want to, to work in the future. And I think something that's important we've all spoke about it is obviously you might not um, when you come in to do a degree uh, if you, and if you chose a geography degree know that what career you might want but a placement is a really good opportunity a good way for you to actually explore what are the career opportunities out there and what you might um, want to do in the future um, so yeah so if there's any questions obviously for any of our, our students in placements um, or in any more general questions feel free to, to pop them into the chat um, shall we, if we obviously have the questions put into the chat, we can go on to our last slide with, with Matt and then we can come back to, to the questions. Is that OK with everybody? Yeah. yeah, I was just going to add very, very quickly just to the end of that, um, that obviously from Alex's point of view as well, from her placement, she's also, and this is the same of a number of them, that she'll actually be working with a number of our former graduates as well, um, because a lot of them have been employed by Middlemarch consequently. So um, I won't name them because yeah but you've got quite a few people there as well so um it's a really useful stepping stone for that so thank you all very much that alex amy ryan and cameron thank you very much for, for the same bits but yeah make sure if you've got any questions pop them in the chat over to you matt so yes let me um echo thanks to to our students who have come along um full free world today we've not bribed them with chocolate or anything they have uh, freely volunteered their time today and we're very very grateful for that uh, and we'd like to think that um hopefully we'd, we've kind of uh, tempted you with the study of geography. Now obviously we're going to come at this from a perspective of Coventry and, and wave our flag and say how great it is to study geography at Coventry, but I'll go into that in a second. But um, before I kind of do the hard sell, which I'm not actually going to do, um, I still want to just to reiterate how useful geography is as a, as a subject to study, whether you choose to study it at Coventry or whether you choose to study it at another university. We won't hate you for that. Um, geography is a really useful uh, subject to study, particularly for those of you who aren't sure what you want to do. If you want to be a doctor, if you want to be a lawyer, we're not going to try and get in your way. We know that there are certain degrees for you to choose in those situations. But if you're kind of like how I was, and I think probably how Jade, Craig uh, and Charlie were, and probably our students as well, this camera's just put his hand up there, um, that you're not 100% sure what you want to do, um, but you want to keep studying and you want to study something that's relevant, that's contemporary, that is going places. That's a bit of a, a corny expression, but geography is going places. That one of our, my animal uh, teachers used to say that to me. Uh, and look at me now, I've gone places. Um, I've gone to Coventry, I've been sent to Coventry. Um, studying geography is a really, really useful uh, job, uh, subject to have, particularly in the, the kind of contemporary world of climate change, um, the environment constantly changing around us, you know, conservation and wildlife protection, all of these things coming in the headlines, you know, David Attenborough, the blue um, marble, all of these things. The environment at the moment is, is the is, is one of the things that affects us all. And it's just like the pandemic, none of us is immune, none of us is safe from the pandemic, none of us is safe from the environment. It, it dictates everything that is around us. And by studying geography, you get to learn a lot more about that. And perhaps some of you that are listening in now uh, might be able to take these learnings on board and help sort out some of these problems that we older people and people older than us um, have um, thrust upon you to, to deal with. Um, coming back to geography, we are doing, uh, we are a good place to study geography, should you uh, want to study geography. Um, our geography and environment courses, you can see that's just some listings here from the most recent um, league tables here. We're pretty high in the country in terms of uh, our geography and environmental studies 
um, offering, so 10th in the country there. Um, and overall, the university is second with regard to satisfaction for teaching. And what you often find is some of the really big universities, if you've got some of the big named prestigious institutions, um, what you often find is that you don't get as much face to face contact with some of the staff as you're likely to do at Coventry, uh, where we we're doing our research, but you are, you students are as much as a priority, if not more of a priority to us than, than our research. And you often find that's not the case elsewhere. Um, we're fifth and fourth for those various other um, indices with the Times, just so the Times will guard it, depending on where you sit on the fence are, are important influential um, league tables. We've got this uh, gold wall for our teaching game, which again confirms our um, expertise and our experience in teaching. And we've ranked number one um, modern university in the Midlands. So I think most of you that we're speaking to are in and around the Midlands. Well, if you want to stay kind of localish, we are the top university, uh, top modern university in this region. And that's overall, not just for geography. So I think we've got um, a lot going for us. And also you've got the keen staff that you've seen, the Charlies, the Craigs, the Jades, um, that the, are the, the sort of staff that would be would be teaching you. So um, I hope that we've, um, yeah, I hope we've inspired some of you today to continue um, studies with geography. And I can see that, um, a few questions have come in now. Does somebody want to run with those or shall I go with them? Well, I mean, Alex has responded. To, I was going to say Alex has responded to, to one Alex already, has. which is great. Thank you. So I will um, I was going to pass. I was going to uh, see if any of the others as well. Alex has got a quite nice response um, to the one about what they say is the best thing. But I suppose um, what about anyone else? I mean, what, what would you say is that what would you say is the best thing about studying in geography? Um. I'd say the best thing about studying geography is the variety of it. So last semester I was doing a module on consumption, so I was doing a lot on fast fashion and H&M and all that sort of stuff and the controversies around that. And then this semester I've been doing about the history of Berlin and Nazi Germany. So it's quite broad and different because I change my mind every couple of months about what I want to do in the future. And I feel like commentary like, allows me to do that. It's not really strict in what I have to do and I can always change my mind. That's a really good point with, with the courses that we offer. Yeah, you've got a lot of flexibility there that you can um, chop and change and, and pick topics. So that's obviously from a human geography perspective. One minute you're studying sort of um, the end of the Cold War in Berlin and then the next minute you're looking at the impact of fast fashion on, on global globalization and global supply chain. Yeah. So there's a whole host of topics then talking from a physical aspect. One minute you might be talking about, I don't know, an endangered species living in a river in rural Kenya and the next minute you're talking about a volcano erupting in um, in the middle of Italy. So there's a whole host of different topics to look at. Uh, so thank you for that. I've seen a question has popped up here. Um, I can see Alexandra's trying to loads of these questions. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, so what trips are in the are there in the course? Let's start with that one. Um, I can do this because I know about this. Well, Cameron's done it for us. So yeah, from the um, Geography and Natural Hazards perspective, we offer trips. Um, without COVID, I should say, um, trips uh, in our second year, we would take you to, well, start with our first year. All our geographers would, on, in a normal year, go to the Lake District. Um, you may get rained on, you may get falling in a river, you may get lost walking around um, Kendall, but we take you to the Lake District um, early on in your first year. Uh, lots and lots of day trips throughout. In the second year, we start taking you overseas in a normal year. Um, so in past years, we've taken the physical geographers, or we would normally take the physical geographers and the geography and natural hazard students to uh, Tenerife. Um, and the human geographers would go to Berlin and there'd be various other day trips. And then in the third year, we have course specific trips um, again in a normal year uh, where we would take the physical geographers to the BSCs to Morocco um, and one minute you're walking through a desert and the next minute you're throwing snowballs at each other at the top of the mountains it's crazy um, the geography natural hazard students we take to Sicily one minute you're walking through a nice uh, volcanic beach and the next minute you're at the top of the volcano it's steaming away and you're throwing snowballs at each other um, and the human geographers go to the Gambia where there's no snow but there's a lot of sun um, a lot of talking to um, people about development and agriculture in, in an environment that many students have probably um, not experienced before. Um, so, so that helps there. Does somebody want to take over the question about what jobs does the degree lead to? I mean, there's hundreds of them, but. 
I was going to first actually say, um, before we go on to the jobs, maybe because obviously um, each of the students we've got with us today haven't been able to go on second year field trips, but do any of you, Alex, Imogen or Cameron or Ryan, want to tell us about the um, the first year field trip you went on in the Lake District? Because uh, <laughs> it was a very different trip. Um, we've got pictures on our, our uh -huh. Instagram pages for that, but obviously um, you, you, you had a go at doing something probably that you didn't do at secondary school. Mm -hmm. what, I do, what I do remember is, sorry, I need to go first. I need to get this off my chest. I do remember <laughs> Michelle explaining to me what Pete was and I had no idea what Pete was. And I found out the hard way because I actually lost my boot, my walking boot, by sinking myself into it. And then that's how I found out what Pete was. So, yeah, <laughs> sorry, I had to get that off my chest. That still scarred me till today. <laughs> but yeah, it was a really good trip. It was a good, it was quite early on in the semester. I think it was in like September. But um it's a really good opportunity to actually just like bond with like the new people that you've sort of like your new kind of like classmates basically in uni. So um, it's really good like to kind of break the ice and kind of like you find your own kind of group sort of thing in there. And it's just it's, it's nice. It's a nice opportunity to kind of like mingle and and yeah, it's good. I was gonna say, yeah, I was going to say about uh, I personally enjoyed when we went to Mickledon Valley. And we looked at the uh, glaciated landscape and we identified all of the features um, that, that were present there and we did a bit of data collecting. Um, but it doesn't feel like uni work, if that makes sense. Like it was much more than going out on a trip and doing work, collecting data. It was it was a full sort of experience of being out with people you've sort of not really known for very long and getting to, to know people and sort of making friends and getting to know the staff as well, uh, which was which was really helpful when it comes to needing support and that because um, you sort of it, it, you don't see them as lecturers as such. They're, they're more like I, I don't know how to say that like partners is in in the same field of study. So um, yeah, and the evenings were fun when we weren't doing work. We could go down to the pub or whatever and just socialise a little bit and sort of get to know everyone on the course better. I think that's something that's um, perhaps one of the, the, the unique parts of our of, of geography degrees is that you are able to, to obviously go out into the field, get to know lecturers and um, you know, your other students, your fellow students when you're all obviously quite new, um, but also get to, to use or learn some new skills that um, you can effectively then use later down the line in your degree for dissertations um, as well as in, in field work as well. So one of the examples I've got that comes to mind is that one of the second year geography and natural hazard students um, is, is going on a, a summer internship this year and they're using some of the skills they've learned in university but on a summer internship um, at the Tenerife um, Volcano Observatory. Um, so it's, it's things like that, that we build those skills up so that when you go into industry or placement, um, you can use the field skills that you've, you've developed um, in, in industry um, and actually consolidate those, uh, those skills as well. Jade, I don't know if you wanted to add anything from the human geography standpoint, because obviously, we'd, you, Jade, you do come and get muddy with us and do some coring, but it's perhaps not uh, what, what, what human geographers are known for. Um, not not particularly. I did really enjoy the coring actually. Um, so uh, yeah, I was, I was an assistant, wasn't I, to a lot of the physical geography staff um, on that. But so it was, yeah, really interesting. But um, from a human perspective, really, I guess it's the communication skills that you learn, which sort of lends itself to that question about jobs as well. Um, you learn skills on how to communicate with individuals um, through questionnaire surveys, interviews, um, you know, creating focus groups. This is all part of the degree. And within um, the Lake District field trip as well, students did have the opportunity to go and use those skills to find out from local communities um, and people living in, in places um, like um, Kendall, for example. Um, and in the case of the VA geographers um, on this trip, it was Manchester they went to and they got to they got to explore Manchester, how that space had been used, so a little bit similar to what I was talking about earlier in my slides, but engaging with local 
community members they're about spaces that they occupy in Manchester the changing music scene the changing culture and regeneration of Manchester and how that has has affected um, things like gentrification for example um, you know the house prices for example and um, who lives there so um, I think a lot of it's communication so what I would say about geography is that although many people will go into very geography focused roles like environmental roles for example the skills that you get as a geographer actually relate to many other job opportunities out there so I've got one student at the moment who's about to graduate and he's just um, got a graduate job for Barrett's Hall so that's construction and you think oh where does that fit and he is now working as a sustainability advisor for them but what they were particularly interested in um, from from his um, human geography skill sets was his ability to communicate to create things like infographics and short policy documents but also to um, work on advisory panels for um, for people working in the, the construction industry. So a lot of it comes with um, the various skills that you learn across all three courses in geography. Um, and you might end up going into a completely different career. And that's that's a great thing about geography. And we do have um, careers advice here within the university for, for students to help them with CVs, um, writing, um, you know writing the CVs, writing applications, all of these skills that you might need, even planning for, for interviews for example. So there are services at the university um, that are available to students who are in that position as well. Um, I don't know if anyone, I think we've responded to the, to the other questions. Anybody else got anything to add at this point? I don't know whether Craig wants to add in anything about alumni um, and jobs, obviously, because I think Jay, um, Craig particularly has a, a, a number of contacts through our alumni, so he maybe can give us some examples. Yeah, I mean, we've we've got quite, we've got obviously an extensive number of alumni. Oh, have I, have I frozen? Am I still, can you hear me? I can see you. Oh, I right. can it's, see you now, I get. Sorry, I thought I'd frozen then. Um, so, Obviously, we've got an extensive uh, alumni list. I try and keep a bit abreast of um, for various reasons. And I mean, we've got, I'm trying to think across all the degrees. I can think of it very specifically for physical geography, but try and take it away from that. We've got people that have worked for companies like, well, for governmental organisations like DFID. Um, the, oh, Jade, you're going to have to help me with the acronym, Funding Department for Funding and International Development. Yeah, international, yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> We'll go yeah. So we've got people working with DFID. We've got other people working for, as Jade mentioned, kind of environmental. A lot of people working in kind of environmental sectors. So whether that be um, going down kind of the geology route, um, but also a lot of people working for the environment agency. So we've had a lot of um, a number of actual of our um, students from, particularly from physical and geography, natural hazards, have gone on to work for the environment agency in various positions. So whether that be in waste resource management, I know. Um, but also obviously the flooding teams and the, um, the, the coastal management teams as well um, and working for local councils and the, a lot of these can kind of come from some of our placements as well and really develop those skills from that, um, particularly from the kind of GIS side and town planning um, and town design and I'll, you know thinking about what I talked about earlier linked to climate change, designing our towns in a sustainable way is really important and making sure our buildings are uh, are environmentally led uh, so we have quite a few people going on to work in that as well we've also got a number of our students working as meteorologists for various reasons for the for the um for the met office uh, so we've got quite a few students doing that uh, i'm just trying to think of any others so matt jay feel free to jump in i'm just trying we've got plenty but we we have the, the, trying to try to think now we also have masters as well so it's not necessarily yeah. Um, we have a, a lot that go on to further study. Um, so uh, after you finish your, your undergraduate degree, if you want to particularly specialise in a specific area of geography um, or continue on to another theme that's still related to geography, we have a number of students that do go on to the postgraduate study, so master's degrees. Um, that allows you to, as I said, specialise in something a little bit further, whether that's GIS, 
uh, international development, um, right through to, to kind of more envi environmental assessments, um, and, and even for, for some natural hazard students into the disaster management side of things as well. Um, other examples that I can think of um, include, um, like Jade's mentioned before, but um, housing companies or, or um, land purchasing companies that allow you to, to buy land for, for developments. Um, I, I particularly know of a student that has gone on to, to effectively design a, a new um, a village um, under a company um, by uh, new housing developments and, and new land um, purchasing. Um, Craig, yeah. like to add something yeah. there. I know I was going to say the, the linking on from that as well we've got a number of our students go into kind of working in logistics because obviously with the GIS background as well so being able to map sorry you can hear all the development work going on in my house sorry Matt's shaking his head so hopefully it's not too loud there's a lorry reversing right outside my house um, but the logistics of um, that and that can be things in terms of supermarkets actually knowing um, what to sell at times that we've got students working at and but also for um, clothing companies as well working in um, the design and the, the, the logistics and they're making sure that they uh, certain companies have the right clothing outputs is um, another thing that I know particularly from a human geography some of our human geographers have gone into as well um, so a kind of a huge variety of things because I suppose yeah, yeah. Um, so um, we, what we teach is everything about the environment that we live in. There's a whole breadth of different kind of uh, jobs and roles and careers really for people. Sorry, Jade, but you are sorry. No, no, no. I've, I was cut. I thought you were finished. No, I was. I was just going to follow on from the the fashion bit as well that we have had. Um, like Emmy had mentioned with the fast fashion industry, but we have had a lot of students who've gone to do um, do research and work. Um, particularly with NGOs in parts of like Sub-Saharan Africa and Southeast Asia, for example, as well. So there are opportunities that way if you are interested in international development. That fits with what what Craig was saying in terms of roles within within organisations like DFID. Um, one final thing I was going to mention as well is there are opportunities instead of a placement for study abroad. So if you are particularly interested in um, travel. Um, and maybe not so much the, the work placement side of things. So we do have partners with different universities, um, some within Europe, although the, the funding around that at the minute is um, uh, slightly more precarious given, given Brexit, but a lot more partners actually that are emerging within um, the US and, and Asia and Australia as well um, in the coming years. So that's another opportunity to study um, geography within other institutions across the world. And again, that offers you that internationalization element that might might work in your favor for careers as well. So um, I don't know if I've got any. Go on, Jade, go on, sorry. Yeah. No, I'll leave it up to, yeah, I'll leave it to Matt. Oh, was, was, yeah, on the screen. <laughs> Unmute yourself, Matt. So it had to be me. Uh, it's snowing here in Birmingham. What the hell is going on? It's, it's the weirdest weather today. Anyway, that's part of the study of geography, right? To understand what's going on in the environment around us. Um, so hopefully we have uh, inspired you and, and hopefully... Um, you have um, learned something about geography, the study of geography, both overall in general and, and that at uh, Coventry. Um, and I guess we just round up now and say thank you so much uh, for your time. If you do have any uh, questions at all, then um, I believe that this question and answer forum will kind of stay open. Is that right? Will it be live for a while afterwards? It, it, should, uh, it should appear as a, as a new chat in right, the okay. um in in the teams if you have the teams app so okay. it should appear as a new chat um the other way to do it is that obviously by being in this you've got all the contact details for each of us exactly yeah so that, that's the important directly thing. that's the important thing so the, the contact details were up back there on the the first slide i believe 
Um, so please, if you do have any questions or queries about the courses, about um, what you would study, entry requirements, uh, what have you, then please let us know. If you've got questions for the students, forward them on to us so we can forward them on to the appropriate um, students as well. Um, other than that, all that's left to be said is, again, thank you so much for your time today. And um, we really hope that you continue in your study of geography, ideally at Coventry. Uh, but if not, wherever wherever your, your studies take you, we, we wish you all the best. Okay, and thank you everybody thank you. for participating. Thank you. Thank you very thank you. much. Thank you everybody. Bye. Goodbye.